Dyson. Bye! Woo! YouTube, SK here to take you on another crappie catching adventure. There's been a lot of talk about fish finders and structure. Very, very important stuff. Check out the hook set. That hook set brings them out quickly. Check out that nice fish. Sure is fun, folks. Sure is fun. Oh, yeah. Bang! What did he just say? Did he say what I think he said? Did he say bam? You better believe he did. Hey, guys, but back to what I was saying is structure is very very important to be on top of near beside behind you have to I mean the, the crappie that's where they live is on that structure uh, you may go and look up and catch them out there just roaming uh, but it's not something that's consistent you want to consistently catch fish you have to fish the structure wood rocks boulders pvc concrete it has to be something there that those gives those fish protection and uh ambush they have to it has to be something there now i'm not saying go out and make you or find you one or two brush piles you need to find brush and structure in several areas due to wind, the wind direction. You could be, go out on a really windy day, and if you only got a couple of piles, they may be in the wrong areas. They may be on the, in the wrong, wrong blah, 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 wind blown section of the lake, and you, you won't be able to, to fish it properly. So, you want, when you searching for structure there are several things you want to think about depth uh, current uh, wind direction all of that stuff makes a big difference and bait bait is another big thing that has to be present because if there's no bait bam bam yeah there he is if there's no bait those fish are not going to be on that that structure there may be one or two there but those good fish are gonna stick with that bait and and if there's structure nearby they will be on that structure uh, you see me I threw another buoy out there there's a log that I'm fishing got a couple little limbs left on it it's not very much it's basically a log laying along the, the bottom of the lake and I started over near that first buoy over there no fish so I worked that that structure and a lot of times those fish will hang up, hang on one section of that structure. I don't know the reason why. It could be the current, could be the way the bait comes through. Several different factors could, could cause them to do that. I'm not real sure why, but I just know for a fact that they do it. Uh, I, I like to start above the structure 
and, and work my way down because if there are any active fish, they're going to be higher up on that on that structure. So if you drop your jig down up to you know, near the bottom and catch fish from the bottom and you're bringing this fighting fish up through the, the active fish up top, they're going to be wondering what the heck's going on. So an important thing is get on structure. Ooh, wee, look at that fish. Wow. Nice one. You have to put that work in. I mean, I, I say it constantly. Put the work in. Put the work in. Now I'm going to talk a little bit. Let's see what you got to say about this fish. That'd be a nice one. That'd be a nice one. That'd be a nice one. Bam! Woo! Yes, sir. I should have. I need to use that net. Just hit my little spot over here, one of my little prime spots, and uh, I just put about a pound and a half in the boat. I got, I got, a, I got a black that's probably pushing a pound and a half, and I got about six more. Okay. Black and short trees. They, they knocking five bro. About ten. You know how I do it. I ain't gonna say because I got your own speaker. That's a that's a secret I can't give away right now. <laughs> you know how I pop it, man. I ain't got to tell you five million times. You know how I do it, man. Okay. Yeah, that depth is about 10, about 10 and then 13. Yeah, it, it ain't bad. It looks that bad. I'm going to win. It ain't just a constant blow, but when it do blow, it's just a gust. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Money? What's he doing? 16. Okay. Yep. I'm going to get you some money. I'll be that way. Okay. Alright. Now, before I go back and talk uh, about uh, the structure and putting in work and and uh, techniques to get on these fish, did you hear the questions that LBG asked on the phone just now? Yeah, I'm I'm still slanging them in the boat, y'all. But I'm gonna talk. I, I know you can do two things at once. So listen to me talking here and looking at me catching the fish. But did you hear the questions that he asked? That is very valuable information, especially if you got a bud that's out on the lake and he's putting fish in the boat. Those are the questions you want to ask. Color, depth, you might even ask action. Uh, now, there were two depth questions. One was how and deep... Three quarters. Am I right with that? Am I right? Ten and three quarters. Ten and three quarters. Call it on the money. But there are two depth questions you need to be asking. And one is how deep are you fishing your jig? That's very important. And then the second part is how deep was the water? What feet, how many feet of water was I fishing over? Very, very important information. <laughs> Wow, man, I'm just slinging these big old things in the boat. I can't oh finish up what I want to talk about. Old boy is right. Oh boy. Look at that fish. <laughs> 14 and three quarters. Big old monster slab. Yes, sir. Feeding very well. Look at that. Poking out that. Got some of that old. Let me get up close. Show y'all where that Wally Marshall mud come from. See that little hole? There it is. Yes, sir. Wally Marshall. There you go, buddy. That is a nice, nice, nice fish. I take some pictures.
Very nice. And 30. Did you hear that? And 30. Now, I'm not in a tournament, but since I've been fishing these tournaments, I always apply that pressure to myself to make me get better. Uh, this type of fishing, I'm going to get back to the, the brush piles and your fish finders and, and techniques and all that here in a little bit, but this is what I want to put on your mind. This, this type of fishing is not that fishing where you go out there kick back and relax this fishing here is where you go de-energize this type of fishing you're not going to re-energize you're not going to leave the lake and say oh I mean you're going to feel great but it's because you're going to be so drained that when you go home and get a good night's sleep when you wake up your batteries are fully charged and you're good to go this type of fishing is not that fishing to where you go out and kick back and free your mind from everything. This this fishing, you have to be on your A plus game. Not just your A game, but your A plus game. Because every little thing that you do, you need to be paying attention to because you once you find what works, you have to repeat that in order to get uh, the, to stay on the fish. And you also have to pay attention to when the fish change because they do it several times throughout the day. You, there's a morning, there's a morning bite that they'll they'll bite a certain jig, a, a certain depth, a, a, a certain size jig, certain color jig, and then once that sun gets up and penetrates that water, they may want something totally different. They may go deeper. They may want a color that's totally different. They may bite a jig size that's totally opposite. And I found this to be the case. I mean, it's seriously the case right now. In the mornings, I'm finding the fish shallow, and they are biting small 132nd to 116th number four hooks, small jigs. Old racer. Those racers are some pretty fish. Bite! And then later on in the evening, I'm throwing a big old 1 8 on there with the number two hook. And that's the case right now. If I want if I want to stay on the fish, that's what I've been having to do. Downsize, shallow in the morning, and as the sun gets up, go deep and with a bigger jig after the after the, the, the sun gets up and penetrates the water. But back to the uh, the structure and your fish finders and being able to find structure. Don't go out on the lake and expect that you're going to cover the entire lake. You need to break whatever lake you're fishing. You need to break it down in sections. And 
you're not going to be driving 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour out there thinking that you're going to find brush. You either need to be on your troll motor or idling, watching your, your fish finder. Even if you got 2D, you can go, you, you can track out areas of the lake and scan it. This is very, very important to help you become very good at catching crop. Without doing this, you will struggle. You will hate fishing for crop. It is work. And I've been saying it for years. It is work being consistent with catching crop. It is a lot of work. Uh, but once you put that work in, even I can't say once you put it in because every time I go out on the lake, I got a great big old question mark on my forehead because I already know that what worked the, my last trip may not work this trip. So I got that question mark to where I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to make changes. I'm ready to try different depths. I'm ready to try different colors of jigs. Do I need scent? Uh, will they bite without scent? I prefer to bite without scent, but a lot of times you got to put something on that jig. And some uh, good scents that I use is the uh, Berkeley Crappie Nibbles. I uh, recently started using some of the uh, Slab Sauce and the G Sauce. And uh, there, there are several different scents that you, you can put on your jig that work excellent. So guys, I mean, this this is it is work, but once you get 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 into using your electronics, let me tell you, I love scanning. I love using my units. I love idling around and finding that 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 stump that don't have, don't nobody know about it. Don't nobody know about it. I put that work in. I found it, and and I know once I drop my jig down there, those fish are going to be excited to see my jig and more than willing to not fire from my jig. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I fish is is solitary stumps, uh, like the, the the log I was fishing earlier. Uh, it's just a log. I mean, everybody's going to pass by that. Nobody's going to fish that small stuff. And everybody wants to get this big old huge brush pile. And everybody can find it. Uh, it takes very little time to find that type of stuff. But, but what I concentrate on, and I'll tell you this. This, is, this solitary stump is one of the stumps that I, I caught my three pounder off of. The bigger fish that I catch come off of the smaller structure, Bam! the smaller solitary stumps. Those fish love that stuff. You may only catch one or two fish off of it, but they're going to be quality fish. Quaternity style fish is what I like to call them. Those no measures. The good fish. But guys, I... I say put in the work, but I'm going to tell you, I really enjoy it. And I know you will too, once you accept the fact that this is this is this type of fishing. If you want to be consistent with catching crappie, this is what you got to do. Uh, put that time in, like I say, break the lake down. Don't try to go and scan the, the entire lake because you'll be frustrated. Pick you one section of the lake and work that area. Get to know it. Name your stumps, name your logs, become familiar with that area. And what you will find is as you fish that stuff, you will you will eventually delete some of it because it won't hold fish. And the ones you have, you know that hey, when I stop right here and drop that jig down there, I'm gonna get hit. And that's what I love about going in areas that I never see anybody fishing. Uh, especially on Lake Houston, uh, Lake Conroe, uh, Lake Somersville. Those lakes got a lot of natural structure in them. Stumps and laydowns. You know, we just recently had that big flood on, on, uh, down here in Houston. 
So there's still a lot of stuff in that lake that just nobody knows about. And although they uh, pull several, several hundreds of thousands of tons of debris out of that lake, uh, several, several trees, all of that they took out was the stuff that was visible. Uh, and that's another topic that we'll I'll, I'll cover later on is visible versus uh, stuff you find that you have to use your fish finder to find. The visible stuff gets pounded by everybody and their brother-in-law, and uh, I, I hardly ever, ever, rarely, ever, ever, almost never fish structure that I can see. I don't do bridges. I don't do standing timber. Uh, I, although I know that a lot of people catch a lot of fish off of bridges, off of standing timber. I mean, yeah, I know that the fish are there, but it's just not a confidence thing for me. Uh, I want to be able to use my unit and find that stuff that's that's underwater, and uh, know that a lot of people are just not pounding it. You know, it, it's just a, a confidence thing for me. I'm not saying that everybody needs to do that. Or that's the only way that you'll catch fish is by fishing the stuff that you can't see. Uh, because there's several guys that do very well on fishing, fishing the stuff that uh, that uh, you can see above water. Uh, and I've taken uh, a few trips with with uh, some really good crappie fishermen, and they either fished uh, bridges or standing timber. And that whole time that they were just snatching fish in the boat left and right, I was struggling. Because it, and, and this brings about the, the topic again of, of confidence. You go out there and, oh, I know these fish are not going to bite. I know this is not going to work. I know that I'm not doing this right. You're not going to catch a fish. You have to know that what you're doing will catch a fish. Uh, and that's a big part of, of putting fish in the boat is, is, is having that confidence and finding the stuff that works for you. Find what works for you. And, and stick with it and uh, be persistent and uh, make it work those fish are very willing to bite uh, but it's like I say some of the stuff that I've, I've talked about here if you don't do that you will feel that the fish jumped on an airplane and and flew off to to Venus or, or something I mean that and I'm gonna tell you at times I feel like that at times, I feel like those fish have just went under the dirt. But hey, guys, there's one thing that I got to say. I must say this. It's a lot of fun chasing these fish. And once you figure them out, if you figure them out, hey, that feeling is like no other. Uh, I, I used to do a lot of saltwater fishing. I, I, I love it. I know I, I still have it in my heart, but it's so hard to not go chase crappie that it is unbelievable. It's such a challenge. It's a big challenge. But once you accomplish that challenge and get on these fish, it, it's a great feeling. And then you get to take the fish home. It is excellent I mean excellent table fare I don't care how you cook it I don't care how you season it get it to the house get it filet keep it cold excellent table fare you can bake it fry it however whatever you want to do this is this is a, a great tasting fish and I love the challenge of catching these fish if you accept that challenge I know you'll love it also but hey guys, uh, in, in the next video, couple videos, I'll be doing some uh, videos uh, showing my unit. Uh, I know that uh, Fishing King, 3 Pound Crappie, and Flopping Crappie, those guys have been showing you the, uh, the different units, uh, the newer units, Helix. And uh, I'm going to show you how... I use my core birds, my core hummingbirds. I have a 798, I got a, a, a 1199, 99. I was supposed to have been putting it on my troll motor, so maybe I'll get that done 
and be able to show you some of that footage off of that unit. I think it'll be a little bit better than the, the 798. But anyway, guys, get into this type of fishing. I know you'll love it. I love it. Let's have some fun. Enjoy it. Put that work in and catch some fish. And have that camera rolling. Hey, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Help me out, guys. I really appreciate it. Get my subscriber count up. Let's make this thing work. I'm going to continue bringing you great content. Help me out. Hit, click that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Show me some love. And of course, thanks for watching.